Recently, we received a request in our How to Rhino community to create a Grasshopper script for the media library St. Paul project designed by Peripheric Architects and we decided to turn it into a full tutorial. Let's get started. So the very first thing we need to do is create a rectangular base. We need a plane where this rectangle will sit and of course we need to define our dimensions. Our next step is to multiply this rectangle vertically. So for that, we are going to use the move component. The motion vector will be unit Z. But here is the thing. We need more than just one rectangle, right? So we need a set of numbers that are equally distributed. And this is where we use the range component. It needs a domain. That's where we define the interval over which our numbers will be distributed and steps, which basically tell us how many intervals we are dividing the domain into. Our next step is generating points that will define our facade openings. First thing we are going to do is create a surface from these rectangles using loft. Then we'll generate random points on it using populate geometry. Just set your number of points and your seed value. Now, if you don't want points near the edges, and sometimes you don't, here is what you do. Extract the edges with deconstruct brep, divide them and connect those division points to the points input. From here, we're going to use cal duplicates to remove points that are too close to each other. We set a tolerance and it keeps only one point from each cluster of duplicates. And these become our attractor points. Now let's create those wave-like facade openings. First, we need to divide each segment of each rectangle. So what I'm going to do is explode first and then divide curve. The number of division points we can control with a slider connected to the count input. Let's put all these division points in the same list with a flattened tree and then pull them to the closest attractor point. Here's something important. The closest point output always matches the number of input points. So we get a list of attractor points where each division point is paired with its nearest attractor. We can visualize this by creating lines between them. So to achieve our goal of having those wave-like openings, we need to move the division points from their original positions. Our moving vector is going to be based on a two-point vector from closest points to division points. But here's the catch. We need vertical direction only. So let's deconstruct those vectors and construct new ones that only have the Z component the vector lengths will be based on the distance between division points and the closest attractor point. We get this list of distances from the distance output and we're going to remap these values. Now, the source domain is key here. First, with the bounds, uh, we create a domain using minimum and maximum distance. This encompasses all our values, but we don't want to move all the points, just those within a certain range from the attractor point. So we need to adjust the domain we use as our source. Basically, the start domain stays the same, but we make the end domain smaller by multiplying it with a factor smaller than one. And obviously, it shouldn't be smaller than the start of the domain. This modified domain becomes our source domain. Okay, so since we want to move points that have shorter distances to the attractor, our target domain will have a start value for how much we want to move those closest points and the end domain will be zero. Once we remap the values, we take the clipped output. This means any values below or above the source domain get clipped to the minimum or maximum value of the source domain. In our case, they get clipped to the source end domain. For even better control, we use a Bezier graph mapper to additionally remap the values and connect it with the vector amplitude. From here, we need to create curves from our moved points. For each side and each height, we need a separate list of points because right now all of them are in the same list. To achieve this, we modify the data tree by moving points back into their original branches using unflattened tree. Now we can create our NURBS curves. 
If you want to join curves placed on the same height, there is a little issue. Each one is on a separate branch. To put them in the same branch, we'll trim tree and now we can join curves. Our final step is creating frames from these curves. But wait, there's going to be an issue here. First, we find the perpendicular frame from each curve and use it as our rectangle base plane. If you want the rectangle to stay centered on the plane origin, you need to feed the same value in both directions. One as a negative for the domain start and one as a positive for the domain end. Okay, so these become our sections for sweep one and our rails are our curves. But then boom, we get an error. Sweep could not be created. So here's the thing. Sweep 1 in Grasshopper simply doesn't like closed curves. To fix this error, we need to split our curves in two parts. We use Shatter for this. After we reparameterize, it requires values from 0 to 1 in the parameters input. Since we want to split it slightly off from the corners, I will set 0.01 .01 as the first parameter to split and the second one will be 0.5 larger creating a split point on the opposite side. Now, these two segments for each height become our rails. For the sections, the rectangular curve stays the same, only its position on the curve changes. It should be on the first split point. So to set this, it should have the same value as our first shatter parameter. And now sweep one works. We have successfully created our wave-like facade frames. If you want to take it a step further, we made an advanced tutorial with a different wavy opening size on the facade, which requires more advanced grasshopper skills. You can access this and all our other extended tutorials and project files on our Patreon page. The link is in the description. Feel free to check it out if you're interested and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.